What's up, guys? It is Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. What is up, DCS crew? We are back at it again today with an SK Blades exclusive right here. This is the Frontier. This is modeled after the Buck 104, uh, the Camp Knife from the Compadre series. And this is something that has been put together by SK Blades uh, based on feedback by Knife Guy. So it was basically created by a Knife Guy for a Knife Guy from the company that has basically been around since 19, uh, since the early 1900s, Buck Knives. You get the legendary Boss heat treated uh, a semi stainless steel right here. Um, you get a beautiful freaking uh, 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 sheath that made it from uh, brown leather, leather. This is actually saddle leather from Hickman Saddlery, uh, Saddlery out of Idaho. And um, there's a lot of value in this. So let's go ahead and uh, look at this. This is going to be a bit of a first impressions video and what I think about the knife itself. So stay tuned. <laughs> So we are back at it. Now, this is the Buck uh, uh, Buck Knives 104, uh, basically supercharged and on steroids. And um, this is a cool, uh, unique concept that it, I, to me is, is pretty much the first time I've actually ever seen this. Um, I am subscribed to the uh, Blade Forums. And in the Blade Forums, there is a sub forum that is geared exclusively towards Buck Knives. And in that particular group, um, SK Blades, uh, the, the skblades.com website owner, uh, Steven, is a big member. And he likes to um, go ahead and show off some of the knives, listen to some feedback from the, you know, from the, uh, the users. And, um, you know, just go from there and figure out what his ideas are going to be for the next knife. So in this particular case, um, what he basically did was... Um, he requested input from the Buck Group on Blade Forums. Okay, he asked uh, what they thought with regards to materials uh, and you know just general makeup and the model that they felt would be used for the, his upcoming model. Um, <clears throat> in this particular case, they wanted a fixed blade. Um, his website is typically known for a lot of different uh, folding designs. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he's done spinoffs of the. Uh, the, uh, the the Spitfire, um, he's done the Buck 110 and 112 in different versions, and he's also done the G&G &G Hawk um, Buck collaboration. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh yeah, it's the Buck Marksman, excuse me. That's actually one that I own. Uh, it kind of like, the, the name slipped my mind because I don't know it as the Marksman. I know it as the Grey Ghost. Um, and if you watch Eric from Outer Limitless, his video of uh, the uh, Buck Grey Ghost is actually the one of the Grey Ghost in Orange, which is the Inferno. In this particular case, um, based on all of the feedback, they came out with a version of the Buck 104, uh, which is the Compadre uh, Camp Knife, and um, he dubbed it the Frontier. So there are a couple of differences between this and the standard version. So I did want to go ahead and show you not only the knife, but the sheath itself, because it does come into play. Okay, so um, first and foremost, before I get into anything, um, you know, something that uh, Steven is very transparent about is pricing. Now the pricing on this, I think is, is value priced in all honesty, and it's at 159, <clears throat> excuse me, 159.99. Now with that, you're gonna get the uh, unconditional buck warranty. It's, it's their forever warranty. You're not gonna have any issues with that. Um, they fully back these knives from their factory, okay? And you get the Boss heat treatment. Now, typically what you see with this particular knife is um, you'll see a coated blade and sometimes it'll either be red or it'll be like a cobalt style, grayish cobalt coating, coating and it's gonna be in 5160 uh, tool steel, okay? That's a carbon steel. You're, you're, you're not gonna be able to use it on stuff like food prep and that sort of thing. Uh, and you're not gonna be able to, to have it, um, you know, in a case where it's gonna be highly corrosion resistant, which is basically the reason why they, they end up coating the blade itself. So it's something that needs a lot of care. Now, granted, you can, you know, um, work on it so that it is safe for food, but it's always gonna leave that funky aftertaste from using a carbon style blade. I'm not really that big of a fan 
Um, and uh, because of that, because they wanted to stay true to a, uh, a true user knife, if you needed something to go ahead and dress game, if you needed to go ahead and, and uh, you know, really cut into stuff, this is a nice in-betweener between, you know, a knife that you thump on, like, you know, the Beckers with the very thick uh, blades and a slicer. Okay, so um, the Buck 104 was a nice welcome to the series, but unfortunately, they didn't get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, really friendly feedback from Buck Knives because of the fact that, you know, they just, they, they didn't perform well given the soft steel that they had, okay? Because it was generally used as, as more of a thumper, and that's not really what it's supposed to be for. Now, in this case, what they did was um, the Blade Forums uh, subgroup actually suggested to Steven at SK Blades to use uh, Boss tr Heat Treated D2 Steel. Okay, which is what you see right here on the blade. Okay, and it is the uh, made in their plant in you in the USA. Now, um, it's an interesting usage for D2. Now, before you guys get into the whole thing about oh, but everybody's using D2, all the Chinese companies are actually using it now. What's the big freaking deal? Well, the truth is, there are three things that you have to consider when you're going to get something like uh, D2 uh, from a company. Number one is the heat treatment. Okay. Number two, obviously, is the, the steel and how um, it has been uh, uh, put together, okay? Uh, and who is sourcing the steel, okay? In this case, it's Buck's D2 and it's Buck's uh, Boss Heat Treatment. And number three is blade geometry, okay? So it's a nice flat grind as opposed to the standard versions of this knife where you're typically going to have something, um, you know, uh, that, that is, well, in this case, they updated this particular knife and they made it a full flat grind, okay? And that's one thing that's really gonna help it with slicing. It does have a nice thick blade profile, but it's not an extremely uh, thick blade profile. And the knife itself is big, but it's a nice medium sized knife. It's not nothing huge and it's nothing small. So just to kind of give you uh, kind of a comparison, we have here the uh, Spyderco Para 3. Okay, and uh, actually, let me take out one of my other knives so you can see, uh, you know, just what the, the sizing difference is. This is the Kaiser T1. Let me go ahead and put it there next to it. Okay, yeah, there we go. And so as you can see, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a medium-sized knife. It's not something that is extremely huge, but it is something that can surely get the job done if you have to go ahead and uh, split some small pieces of wood, uh, if you have to go ahead and create, you know, little curls and stuff to be able to use for um, a fire, if you have to go ahead and break down some boxes, anything like that, uh, if you have to dress some game. It's kind of like an everyday, an everything knife. And with the way that it's been heat treated, the type of uh, grind and the, the blade shape, as well as the, the steel that is being used, it's something that you can really put to work uh, without any problems from, you know, either the, the steel not performing well or maybe the warranty not working for you in case the knife doesn't perform or anything like that. It is something that is proven, okay? And we're talking about buck knives. They've been around since 1902, and I'm pretty sure the boss heat treatment is specifically noted on the blade for a damn good reason. This is actually the third buck in my possession. Um, I do have a buck skinner, uh, a ranger skinner, and I do have the SK Blades exclusive uh, Grey Ghost uh, which I freaking love and is in a uh, boss heat treated S35 VN steel. So, um, like I said, the steel itself is a D2, it's boss heat treated. The handle scales are uh, they are burlap micarta, okay? Um, basically, what they've done is they've taken micarta, the, the burlap micarta and they've put it on here and they've, they've smoothed it and they've actually, uh, they've sanded it down and they've sandblasted it to kind of bring out that kind of grippiness and that texture with micarta. Um, for the standard micarta here, actually, let me see if I can go ahead and take this guy out so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? Um, this is my Giant Mouse Ace Biblio, okay, and green canvas micarta. This is canvas micarta, so you can see what it is I'm talking about. And the cool thing about micarta is as you use it, the oils in your hand, okay, actually permeate into the micarta itself. And you can always, um, you know, uh, take the the, uh, the micarta and you can, you know, remove it, you can wash it and you can try it. And it actually goes back to its original uh, look, but it creates a nice unique look, okay? And no two uh, uh, micarta handles ever look the same. 
because of the fact that the user actually uh, creates the uh, the kind of um, the the oh man the just the oils and stuff from the user's hands uh, you know gunk uh, you know water anything like that permeate into the micarta and they actually change the color into something unique if you notice the 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 the, uh, the bottom of the micarta is actually very dry and the top part is actually much darker because i've actually been using that part okay when i grip it to be able to go ahead and work on knife i mean work uh the knife into um you know material and media that i've used while i am researching this particular blade so um the um a few things that i really like about it okay um like i said unlike the other uh the the other knives in the compadre series uh the frontier is actually a full flat grind i really like that there is a slight recurve to it with, which really helps when you are slicing through things uh the the, the size itself it's kind of reminiscent of like a uh an se4 i want to say like I, it kind of feels that way um, you know, the, the handle scales are really, really nice. That, that burlap micarta has a nice texturing to it and they've gone ahead and they've sandblasted to give it some nice, uh, uh, uh I guess, um, texture onto it so you can get a nice purchase to it. Uh, the ridges here in the back, it's, it's nice enough for you to be able to go ahead and uh, secure your thumb, whether it's uh, the front or the back here, to be able to go ahead and keep your knife on the blade. You have this, uh, this little um, tang safety here that keeps your hand from sliding up onto the blade itself. You have the sharpening troll here that's been notched out uh, so that when you go ahead and you sharpen your blade, if you want to use a guided sharpener like the KME or, you know, the Wicked Edge, anything like that, um, you can basically go from the uh, the, 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 ba the base of the blade up all the way to the tip and not have any issues with um, the, the, the base being sharpened incorrectly. So that's something to consider, okay? Um, I really like how a Buck ends up dating their knives. If you can see right here, okay, the 104 has kind of like, it looks like it's, um, it looks like a cross, but the right portion is actually a dot instead of a dash. Um, that actually designates that this is a 2019 build. Uh, it's a really cool concept that ba uh, that uh, Buck Knives has been using probably since the early 80s. And what they do is they create a symbol after the model so you can actually date the knife that you have down to the year, okay? Um, the um, <clears throat> the pivots are uh, T10 screws. I actually took them apart in a another video that I am going to be showing a little bit later on. And um, this is a full tang knife. Um, I, I mean, th there is a lot to like about this knife. It doesn't feel thick in your hand, but it feels nice and robust. Um, I mean, I just, I like it a lot. Okay, and this is something that would be great to use whether you're outside in the garden, whether you're prepping food, whether you know you're hunting, you're dressing deer. Like I said, it's pretty much uh, uh, an insert knife here type of thing for the task. Um, now, there are a couple of things that I do want to talk about uh, aside from the knife that I really like. And one of them is the fact that aside from the knife, you get Buck's warranty. Um, they are known for replacing the, you know, the knife if you end up using it and it fails on you for whatever reason. You contact them, they send you a, you know, a return ticket, you go ahead and you send it to them and they send you the new knife or they send the equivalent in the event of the unlikely event that a knife like this is, is no longer available. Now, <clears throat> I do want to say that this is something that SK Blades did really well. Um, I, I do have to highlight this fact because it doesn't actually have to do with the blade itself. It has to do with the buck sheath. Now, it does have the buck insignia with the uh, the, the iron uh, uh, up on the top, which is basically part of their, um, you know, their logo. There's, the, you know, the iron with the... Um, with the B on it, and then there's the buck insignia there. Um, this is um, used, you know, you, you put your, your belt loop in here and you tie it onto the side of your, um, your shorts or your pants, and you can carry it that way. Um, but aside from that, this leather is extremely soft. It's very well done, but it's not done uh, from the typical buck factory. Uh, buck actually makes their black sheaths from um, Mexico. They're, they're made in Mexico and they are imported and they are uh, put onto the buck fixed blades. It's something I really don't like from a company that is supposedly made in the USA, like it states on the box itself, okay? So um, one thing I really like about this is that this is actually a handmade brown leather friction sheath 
that was made by Hickman Saddle, uh, Saddlery out of Idaho, okay? Go ahead and check them out. They actually used the leather from the saddles that they custom make, and they went ahead and they produced these sheaves specifically for Buck. So you're not only getting a semi-custom knife, uh, like a mid-tech, uh, but you're also getting a custom sheath for $159.99. That's freaking awesome, okay? I'm sorry. I, I just, you know, I'm not trying to be partial to, to SK Blades because I've used some of their stuff, but the truth is I am going to be a little bit partial to them because I have used their stuff and I know that it works well. Buck has always had a really good name for their knives. Uh, the Compadre series didn't really fare so well, and I think this is going to be the redeeming factor for uh, for the company. Now, um, that being said, there are a couple of things that you know I, I felt that were worth mentioning. Um, because of the fact that it does have a recurve, if you're not used to, uh, you know, uh, working with a recurve, you know, it is going to be a bit of an issue when you're going to go ahead and sharpen it, okay? Um, not everybody is big on using a leather sheath, and usually when you pick up one of these leather sheaths from, say, you know, Buck, uh, you usually throw it away or you just put it into, you know, a storage and you end up getting a nice Kydex sheath. Now, the problem with Kydex is that when you stick it into Kydex, even if it's formed perfectly, there is going to be some issues with the edge eventually uh, starting to wear into the kydex, and you're not going to you're going to have some issues with wear on the edge, and you're going to have to be sharpening it a little bit more often. That becomes a little bit more difficult with D2 steel as opposed to just your standard 1095 or 5160 steel that you'll see on these kind of knives. Okay, and aside from that, because of the fact that it has a leather sheath, if for whatever reason you use the knife and you end up putting it in here. Um, there is no drainage hole, okay, so that any moisture that goes into the in, into here comes out. But aside from that, the moisture is in, is going to impregnate the leather. So being that you have a semi stainless steel and that is going to be inserted into this friction sheath, which by the way it locks up extremely nice, um, you're basically going to have the water constantly contacting the blade. Now, if it's a coated carbon blade, if it's a coated stainless blade, then you're going to have some type of, of resistance to be able to go ahead and keep it from corroding and rusting. But in this particular case, it is a bare uh, uh, semi-stainless D2 steel that you have. And once you put it into a moist sheath, you basically have that moisture that's going to be fighting into the steel and hoping that it oxidizes the steel. It's just, it is what it is. Okay. Now, one last thing, and it's something that's pretty pedantic, but I did want to go ahead and mention it. Um, I really wish that Buck would have gone ahead and put, you know, the Buck USA, the model and the uh, Boss D2 designations on here stamped into the actual blade itself instead of laser etching it like they do here. Um, they do that on some of their newer models, but if you check some of their older stuff, you find it stamped. There are other companies that have adopted that, like Becker uh, with their K-Bar knives. They, they did have stamped models. I actually have a BK9 uh, that was stamped that way, um, and they went ahead and um, ended up laser etching the newer models, um, you know, later on i guess it you know it saves the machines uh somewhere in tear and i guess it saves them a little bit of money to use the, the laser etch instead of the stamping but it's just something that i wanted to consider uh and that i did want to go ahead and let you guys know about okay so i mean other than that i can tell you that the sk blades frontier is one heck of a knife um i put it to some really good use i uh you know i cut through uh you know all manner of boxes that i had from my from my move i must have had maybe about eight or nine boxes uh, stropped it back up. You know, I used some goo gone on the actual blade itself to get all the gunk and stuff off of it. And um, as a finishing touch, I went ahead and I used this stuff called uh, Metal Care Cloth. It's something that I use on some other knives and my firearms from uh, Pro Shop Products. I really recommend you checking that out. Um, this is a really good quality knife, you know, and I mean, with what you get here, you're getting one heck of a value. And uh, I know I say that sometimes often, but the truth is I wouldn't put something on here, you know, and try to sell you on something that I myself wouldn't use. I'm actually, you know, I actually used fixed blades more than my folders because I'm, I'm, I'm constantly in the kitchen. So to be able to use this in the kitchen, to be able to use it outdoors, you know, to be able to, to, to you know, carve wood, to dress game, to be able to work in the garden, uh, you know, around the house, that sort of thing. Uh, this is a knife that fits a lot of tasks. Okay, this is the answer to the question, not the answer looking for the question. Uh, and it's something to very, uh, to very seriously consider if you are a fixed blade guy and you are looking for a quality buck knife that doesn't fit the typical buck persona. 
okay? Feel free to go ahead and check this out at skblades.com. Huge shout out to Silver Knights, AKA Steve from SK Blades for sending this out to me to review, as well as the Apex Pass Around for going ahead and showcasing the uh, SK Blades model line of knives. Shout out to Blade Forums for going ahead and putting this together because without them, this would not actually exist. And uh, shout out to you guys for watching this video. I mean, you're watching it because you're interested in what they are offering and what I have to say about the knife. Uh, I think it's a great knife. I highly recommend it, especially from $159.99. Every now and then, SK Blades will have a sale, but the be the base price, the standard price that you're gonna find this is $159.99. You're getting burlap micarta, boss heat treated D2 steel, and a, a uh, custom uh, brown leather sheath that goes really well with the knife made uh, uh, by Hickman Saddlery out of Idaho. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to go ahead and reach out to me. I can be reached via the contact page at www.dailycarrysolutions.com or you can reach me at Instagram at Daily Carry Solutions. Um, if you have any questions about the the knife itself that you feel that uh, you want to go ahead and speak to SK Blades directly about, skblades.com is your best bet, or you can find them on the Bucks subgroup in Blade Forum. So thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, whether it's a Becker, whether it's a K-Bar, whether it's a Buck, whatever you choose to as your fixed blade or your folder, if you EDC a fixed blade or folder, just remember, think of DCS. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been one heck of a video. I really enjoyed using this knife. Again, shout out to Apex Passaround and SK Blades for providing this knife. And I hope to see you guys again next time. In the meantime, check out some of my other videos if you're feeling kind of bored and feel free to subscribe. That way you get first dibs on videos when they are posted again, typically uh, every Sunday. All right, take it easy and I will see you guys next time. Peace.